My photos still suck. I bought the top of the line camera thinking I'm gonna get some great photos, but my photos still suck. What am I doing wrong? I see that kind of post at least once a week in the photography Facebook groups. And when I take a look at these photos, I see harsh lighting condition, bad weather, distracting elements. You know, nothing on their skills or anything because who needs skills to do photography? <laughs> But real talk though, even professionals can still take a couple of bad photos. It is just inevitable. While knowing your camera settings does help a whole lot, there are still a lot of factors out there that are completely out of our control that can result in a terrible photo. So in this video, I want you guys to not feel bad the next time you take a photo and offer you guys a few tips on how to improve them in the future. And by the way, this helpful guide is sponsored by our good friends over at Squarespace. Tip number one, lighting. And this is where a majority of the beginners confuse bad lighting as them being bad at photos. Now I'm not talking about lighting as in bringing a speed light or flash or using off camera lighting. I'm talking about lighting in the scene. It doesn't matter who you are, you're going to be dealing with harsh lighting, hazy weather and gloomy days. Unfortunately, weather condition and natural lighting are completely out of our control but we can learn how to work with them. Generally, when you're dealing with harsh sunlight during high noon, you're gonna run into all sorts of problems. The background could be extremely blown out or your subject could be extremely blown out. If you must absolutely have to shoot during harsh lighting condition, try to place your subject in the shade or placing the sun behind the subject. It's not always gonna be the best, but at least you're working with what you got. And if there's a chance for you to go back to that photo location, go back during sunrise or sunset. During those hours, the lighting will be absolutely perfect. Let's go ahead and take a look at this scene that I got from Yosemite. This was during high noon and the sun casted a pretty hefty shadow on these rocks and mountains. The scene still looks pretty nice, but we aren't seeing too much details. Versus this shot that I got around sunset, Massive difference, right? And generally, cloudy days are the perfect time to shoot some portraits because the clouds are blocking the sun, creating some nice, soft, even lighting on your subject. However, the same cannot be said for landscapes. Overcast days can make a landscape pretty dull and even non-existent. Now, PSA, don't let bad lighting or bad weather conditions stop you from creating memories. I am super guilty of this myself. Whenever I see harsh lighting condition or gloomy day, I'm just, I'm just defeated. I just, I just won't even take my camera out to take photos or take videos because I'm just, I just know they'll be bad. However, because I didn't even bother trying, I lose out on memories of my adventure. For example, me and Vivian did this hike up this mountain to see this grand view of the village that we were staying in. It was supposed to be very beautiful. The cherry blossom trees were surrounding the city. It was gonna be a fantastic shot. This was the expectation of my shot. And this was the reality. I'm thankful I still took a video and a selfie of that day, even though you can't even see the village at all. At least, hey, I did this thing, I, did, I went out there and did this thing with Vivian, we hiked up there, it didn't work out, but we still have something to look back on at the very least. Tip number two, things in the frame and things not in the frame. Now I didn't wanna bring up composition in this video just because I feel like a lot of people are pretty decent at it already, plus it's a well-beaten topic to be honest with you. Rather, I want you guys to focus on what's in the frame and what's not in the frame. For example, let's just say you're out traveling to a very touristy spot. You obviously don't want the other tourists to be in your photo, so you would either have to wait it out or find a way to crop them out. Unless the other tourists are contributing to the story that you're trying to tell in your photo, they can be very distracting. And to add on to this topic, considering adding some foreground to your shot. It could be something as simple as leaves, trees, or even some bokeh lights. These foreground elements can add a bit of dimension to your overall photo. Tip number three, try shooting 35 millimeter and up. So if you bought your camera from Costco or some sort of starter pack, you're bound to have this kit lens called the 18 to 55. If you have a kit lens that's 18 to 135, well then you lucky dog. Now most people tend to use 18 millimeter for wide shots and zooming into 55 whenever their subject or object of interest is too far away. That's natural, that's what a zoom lens is for. However, try shooting 35 millimeters and up instead for portraits. This is equivalent to portrait mode in your phone. Try shooting 35 millimeter, 50 millimeter, or even 70 millimeter, even for wide scenes. And if you need to fit your subject into the frame, just take a few steps back. That's because a tighter focal length helps compresses the background so your subject and the object of interest don't feel too far away from one another. 
versus if you're just shooting wide, it just doesn't really have that epic feeling. Again, you want to use a tighter focal length versus shooting wide and walking close to your subject. It just doesn't give that same compression. Tip number four, after you've taken a photo, you zoom in, you pinch to zoom, and you're just like, wow, why is it so blurry? Why is it so shaky? Why is it so noisy? Those are the three sins of photography. Blurry photos, shaky photos, and noisy photos. These are the top three common problems that beginners have. So how do you fix them? If you are having issues with noisy photos or grainy photos, I would suggest keeping your ISO setting below 1600 if you are using a crop sensor camera and keeping it below 6400 if you are using a full frame sensor camera. Those would be my suggestion if you are a beginner. However, I do want to point out that everybody's noise tolerance level is different. So I would recommend trying out different ISO settings to see what your limit is. If you are having issues with blurry photos, consider ramping up your shutter speed. Try matching your shutter speed with the focal length that you're shooting in. For example, if you're shooting with a 50mm, your shutter speed should be at least 1 over 50. If you're shooting with a 200mm, your shutter speed should be at least 1 over 200. What can also help you with blurry photos is if your lens or your camera have some sort of stabilization built in. And lastly, if you find that you always have a lot of missed focus shots, try raising your aperture value. For example, if you're running into this issue shooting at f1.4, try stopping down to f1.8 or f2. What? Blasphemy! I bought this f1.4 lens, I shot a couple thousand dollars for it, I'm gonna shoot exclusively at f1.4, otherwise, what is the point? Whoa, okay, calm down there, alright? Don't need to blow up on my face. Listen, I completely understand that sentiment. I am exactly the same way. Whenever I buy an expensive prime lens, f1.4, f1.2, I'm gonna shoot exclusively at those aperture. I'm gonna shoot landscape with those aperture. I'm gonna shoot plants with that aperture. I'll shoot my food with that kind of aperture. But the thing is, when you're working with such a thin depth of field, you're not always gonna get the sharpest or the steadiest results. What I'm trying to say is, if you're shooting landscape or a giant group photo, don't be afraid to stop down to f5.6 to f8 from time to time if it means getting sharper results. But if you're shooting portraits and you need to really isolate your subject from the background, or you're shooting in a low light condition and you need to maximize the amount of light coming into your camera, then by all means shoot at f1.4 or whatever the higher aperture value is of your lens. And lastly, tip number five, just some simple editing. That's all you need. Something as simple as lowering the highlights and boosting your shadows can go a long way for your photo. A lot of the times, after you've taken a photo, you find some sort of distracting elements in the corner of your screen. Be sure to crop that out. And if your horizon is off, considering using the straightening tool in your photo editing software. Now, filters and presets are nice. It can definitely add a very distinct look to your photos. However, make sure you dial down the intensity. By the way, tag me in your next Instagram photo at JasonVMedia and bonus cookie points if you use my tips in this video to create your next shot. I hope this video was helpful to you guys. Thanks for watching, but before you go... I'm sure you heard by now, Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to create beautiful and clean websites. Recently, Vivian and I launched our free filmmaking course and we created a landing page to house all five tutorials. Creating this page took us no more than 30 minutes to put together thanks to Squarespace's user-friendly interface. Whether you need a website to build a portfolio or an e-commerce store, build it with Squarespace. Start your free trial today and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash jasonvong to save 10% off your website or domain. See you guys in the next video. Peace.